Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. A while back, I made a video asking you what you wanted to see on my channel. And some of you suggested that I would do a video about song making, songwriting. And I will do a series about songwriting. We're gonna write a song together. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss those videos. I also made a songwriting guide you can find on my webpage. It's a 15 pages long songwriting guide with useful information if you want to write a song. I charge $1,000 for this at my webpage, but you can have it for free if you sign up with your email address. I prefer if you bought it because I could use the money and then I could afford colors for my printer because it's more colorful and aesthetically pleasing, I think, as a PDF. Yeah, let's start. Many of the things I'm going to mention in this video and in future videos you, you will find in my songwriting guide. I've also made a Spotify playlist where I refer to songs from the chapters of the songwriting guide. You can find it all on my webpage and the link is in the description. So what makes a good song? We'll first go through the building blocks of a song. I have narrowed down the building blocks to five elements. And this is the way I like to see it. In no particular order, you can change the order however you like it. But I start with the melody. The melody could be anything, a saxophone, a vocal, of course, a bass line in a hip hop song, a guitar riff in a metal song. The melody is whatever you can hum, sing or whistle, that's the melody. Then we have the lyrics, the text, the words. There's a lot of music, of course, that doesn't have lyrics, but then there is a title describing the song you're listening to anyway, which is a kind of lyric. The harmonies or chords. Often the chords are supporting the melody, but sometimes the chord is such an important part of the piece you're working on or listening to, a guitar riff, for example, that it becomes equally important as the melody and the lyrics. The rhythm. The rhythm, obviously, drums and percussion and things like that, but the rhythm can be anything. It could be a guitar riff there also. Often, the melody of a vocal can be more rhythmic than melodic sometimes, especially in hard rock and metal. Hip-hop, of course, there you have also the rhythmic element in the melody, or is it a melody? The fifth element is the arrangement or production, or maybe you should call it sound. The, the shaping of the song. This is for the listening experience, of course, very important, but not for the songwriting process, in my opinion. Because if you have written a good composition, a good song, you can take it anywhere with the production and arrangement and the sound. You can make it in different genres, if you like. The arrangement, production and the sound is what is determining the genre, not the composition itself. I will show you that at the end of this series, where we're gonna do this song, we're gonna write in this series in different ways. And I will try to explain how and why I'm doing certain things. And to be able to do that, I also have to put words on things I'm doing. And words are not the best way to describe music, the kind of feeling that music is, but I will try to do my best to describe it so you can understand it and follow along. So what makes a good song? I've tried to figure out what makes a good song for me. And we all have different tastes, a little, at least slightly different tastes. And we all listen to music in different ways. Some listens more to the performance than the composition. Some listens more to the lyrics than the actual melody. Some listens more to the production and sound than the actual composition. I have come up with a few things that for me makes a good song, or at least what I'm trying to achieve when I'm writing a song. Let's go to the piano and I will explain more. I will try to show you a few examples of what I am aiming for when I'm writing a song. One of those are tension, and tension in the way that it feels exciting, and especially tension with release. 
for example, this intro by a famous British group from the 70s, it's, I, I'm not sure if I can even mention the names of the songs or even the groups because of uh, copyright, but maybe you understand what I mean anyway. This group is called King, no, not King, it's something else. It, the intro goes like this. And there you have a tension and release already in the intro. It's a very mild tension, but it is a tension because we have a major chord and the first note here is not within that chord and then it lands on a note within the chord. That is tension and release. Another song, a Swedish famous disco group, sort of, from the 70s. Uh, this is called this with the same name as the former song, but it's Dancing King, or not King. Uh, anyway, uh, the chorus is like this. You, you hear the first note of every measure, first note in every bar doesn't belong to the chord. And then it resolves into a note that actually belongs to the chord. You can also create tension with chords, with the harmonies. This is an example from a British group, fa very famous British group from Liverpool. And this is one of their earliest songs where they didn't have, they haven't even developed their harmony skills so much, but still they had some tricks. So the song goes like this. The second chord doesn't belong to the key. If it would belong to the key, it would sound like this. Not as interesting. That's also a kind of tension. Another way is that the melody or vocal stays more still, but the chord changes. So we have an example from a famous group from Australia that goes... They play a riff like that, but the melody stays... at the same two, three notes all the time. That means that that note get different purpose, give different tension what chords are playing to that melody. That's a way you can create tension also. Another thing I like to search for is repetition. Repetition is very common nowadays where you have a song with only four chords and the, it's the same four chords all the way through. That's a kind of repetition. And then they change the melody and the production to make the song interesting all the way through. Another way is to, to have the same sort of rhythmic elements in the melody or in the chords throughout the song so it feels like it fits together. What I don't like is when I listen to a song where I feel that the verse is from one song and the chorus is from another song and they have tried to just glue them together, but they should be in different songs. I try to make my songs so they feel familiar all the way through. One thing is, of course, this song. Which have the same chord riff over and over. And it's only three chords, and, and it's the sort of main chords of that key. Nothing interesting in, at all. But with the rhythm, which is one part of song making, and the repetition, it becomes interesting. Another way you can have repetition in the melody while the chords are changing. This is an example from an American group who are hunting vehicles. The melody repeats itself, but the chords are changing. There are, of course, more things to think about when writing a song, and I will explain throughout this series as good as I can.
Do we need inspiration? Yes and no. I would say yes and no, but yes, but not really. I would argue that most songwriters don't depend on inspiration to write songs. They go to work and they make the song. Thomas Edison once said that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And I think that that is applicable to songwriting as well. Maybe you want or need that little seed of inspiration to get you started, to get you going. But after that, it's hard work to finish that song. Inspiration can come from so many different places. Listen to conversations, watch a movie, read a book. Play a synthesizer, just sit and play your instrument and see what you can come up with. Try a different key, try a different tempo. And sometimes when you play it wrong, that's an inspiration for a new song. So go through what you're playing and search for it. Because inspiration is something you actively have to search for. Like a photographer that's going out with his camera and always looking for a shot look for inspiration the same way so the inspiration for this song came from you you said write about something we used to use used to use i tried to find things that we used to use in the past and i was starting to write a song about a fax machine and now i lost you a fax machine is like a telephone for papers you send the paper you didn't actually send the papers you send the information that was on. google it i won't explain what a fax machine is here we're not gonna do that we're gonna write a song about this this is a mini disc player and this is a mini disc and you open it and you fill this with mp3s and you didn't label it so you it's a surprise what's on it every time you put it in and you could walk on the streets and listen to music and this was revolutionary in the 90s which doesn't seem so long ago but it probably is but we're gonna write about a mini disc so that's my inspiration for this song my challenge for this song what kind of tools do you need to write a song well, it's good to play an instrument a bit anyway. You don't have to be skilled, but play a little bit on an instrument, especially a chord instrument like guitar, like piano, accordion, things like that. Also, it's good to have a door like Logic, Cubase, Reaper, whatever you like, whatever, whatever door suits you just fine and if you don't play an instrument you can actually write the song in the door i will show you a little bit about that in the coming episodes what i like to have is this one a smartphone because if i get inspiration if i come up with ideas i can record them here i can write down lyric ideas wherever i am because i bring this everywhere i also like to have notebooks because for me, it's easier to brainstorm with myself if I write them down with a pen and paper instead of on a computer or a telephone. That seem, That is for me more definite if I write it digital than if I write it on a paper. I, I can just erase it and change the page to another page. It's easy for me to brainstorm with a notebook. So that's about it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to write the melody and the harmonies of the song about a mini disc. So, hope to see you then. The Swedish word of today is write, and write in Swedish is skriva. Skriva. Until next time, Roger then. Mm -hmm.